to our Anointed Ground Church family and our listening visitors of families and friends. Since we're not able to assemble together in the church in a large crowd setting, we are reaching out to you by video to let you know that we are praying for each of you to be safe during this time of crisis in our nation. We continue to pray that God will heal our land. It will be through prayer, our faith, and the word of God that will help all of us to make it through this crisis. I would like to read the scripture that we are standing upon as a church in this time for God's protecting power. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the northern pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust Thou in its truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash their foot against a stone. They shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shall show him my salvation. We will now hear from Pastor Joseph E. Reeves, Sr. Please hear him. Thank you, sweetheart. I want to say, first of all, we are very grateful to God and thankful that um, he's keeping us and he's covering us as we stand upon his word and his promises. We can indeed trust the Lord to watch and shelter us in this time of trouble. So thank you. That Psalms 91 is something that we all should be reading and we all should be confessing each and every day. And I pray that you do that um, with us and together. Now, it's been some time and of course you know pastor I love the hug and, and give you kisses and all that and I miss you I want you to know you're indeed miss we miss the fellowship uh, as we stand here and we film this I'm glad to have my son and my daughter-in-law with us who are helping us to make this possible as I look across a church of empty seats I can use my imagination and see each and every one of you because you always sit in the same seat. So I can see you there in my imagination. But to God be the glory. Uh, like it says, you are indeed miss, And uh, we love you. What I want to do is just share a little bit with you. Just an encouraging word. Not a sermon. Uh, more of a sermonette or something. But just something that I can share with you in these times of trouble. Uh, my church family knows that um, humor is a very important part of our worship and we do like to share a lot of humor in our worship services now remember that uh, it's been scientifically proven that when you laugh when you have the right attitude when you have a humorous uh, personality that that actually helps to build your immune system so think about that if you want to increase and build your immune system you should share some humor 
And my congregation, they love my jokes. Amen. And this is one I think that would be appropriate. I, I'm reminded of, of this particular young man who walked into this doctor's office, and it was close to closing time. The receptionist and the nurse was getting things together. It was almost five or so. They're closing the office. And he wandered into the office, and looking kind of dazed, he looked at the nurse and said, I need to see the doctor. And the nurse says, sir, we're about to close. We're about to close. We're about to leave. He says, no, no, I want to see the doctor. And the doctor overheard the conversation and says, nurse, let him come on back. Let him come on back. I'll talk to him. And he came back to the doctor and he told the doctor, he says, doctor, he says, I need to see you. The doctor says, what's the problem? He says, well, I think I'm a moth. You think you're a moth? He says, yes. He says, why do you think you're a moth? He says, I just feel like I'm a moth. The doctor says, well, I can't help you. I'm a family physician. And you need to see a psychiatrist. And uh, the doctor says, well, there is one down the street about several blocks up. You can go to him, and he can help you because I'm a family doctor. And he says, but by the way, he says to the man, the doctor asked, he says, why do you pick uh, my office to come to? The man looked at the doctor and says, well, I was walking by, and I saw the door was open, and the lights are on. I can hear you laughing right now. I can hear each of you out there laughing right now. And that's what we need to do. We, in spite of everything that we're going through, everything that we're experiencing, these are tough times, right? But we have to keep the right mindset. We have to keep a positive attitude. And we have to smile. We have to find that joy. You know, uh, happiness is based upon things happening. But joy, that true joy that God gives us, that the world can't take away, comes from the inside. So I just pray that you keep it. Uh, a, a good mindset and a, a good humorous heart as we go through these times. I got a couple of scriptures I want to share with you just for a few minutes, and then we'll be out your way. Uh, first scripture I'd like to share will be coming from the Gospel, St. John, chapter 17, uh, verse 9. We'd like to read all the way down through verse 12. Gospel of St. John, verse 17, verse 9. Chapter 17, that is, verse 9. And this is a prayer. Jesus was praying on behalf of his disciples as he prayed to his father. He said, Father, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. Am I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I have come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou hast given me, I have kept. And here's a very important part of this verse. And none of them is lost. Say that with me. And none of them is lost. And I thought it would be so appropriate for us, Jesus saying that everyone that you've given me, Lord, everyone that you've given me, I've kept them in this old evil world, and none of them is lost. None of them is lost. And I, and I want you to just pray with me just for a few minutes on this subject. Not a one. Not a one. Say it with me. Say, not a one. All right. Now, we talked last time we talked, we talked with you from the book of Isaiah, we shared that uh, God was telling us as a people that sure enough, we have to go through some things. Now, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 said this. If you remember this scripture a few Sundays ago, we shared this to help us. But now thus say the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, and I love this. He says, thou art mine. Say that with me. Say, thou art mine. Yeah, in times like these, family, that's the most assuring thing that we need to make sure that we are aware of is that we belong to God. And see, we can, we can no longer afford to just uh, make believe or play like we're in church or we play like God is our Heavenly Father. He's Lord of our lives. No, these are times that we have to be sure and very sure that we belong to God and he is our father. And verse 40, verse 40, chapter 43, verse 2 says this, 
And when thou passest through the waters, I will be what? With thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now, the key word through that particular verse, Isaiah 43 and verse 2, is the word through. The word through. Say through. When we go through things, see, a lot of times we, we've been conditioned and, and, and as, as a church, and sometimes we become comfortable because we don't want to go through anything. But sometimes when you read God's word, you begin to see that there are things that as a people we have to go through. Even though we're God's people, we have to go through some things. I know many of us, as I, I said here in my church family, so many Christians want to be raptured. They want to be caught up and meet God in the sky. And that, that's a wonderful thing to hope and pray for. But sure enough, family, there are some things that even though we're God's people, we're his chosen, we will have to go through. As I think about Paul, Paul was God's number one man. He wrote uh, over what, a third of the New Testament, but yet Apostle Paul went through some things. He was, he was shipwrecked. He was stoned. He was, he was beaten. He, he, he went through a lot of things. Even though he was God's number one man, he still went through some things. So I hope this will comfort us. Many of you out there, I know you're probably hurting. Some of you are lonely. Some of you, you know, you miss the fellowship of the church, but that's okay. God is with you as you go through these things, and that's the most important things to remember. You are not alone. Say, I'm not alone. You are not alone. God will be with you as we go through this crisis and as we go through these terrible times. You know, as a kid growing up, I'm always very... Uh, uh, aware of the fact that sometimes in our little neighborhood, we had to fight. We had to kind of watch out for some of the bullies and things like that. But there are times that I would walk, and I would walk with assurance because I knew I had my big brother behind me. And I felt that with, with that confidence that it doesn't matter who I, what I face or who came against me, my brother was with me. And that's something that we have to realize in this uh, crisis and the times that we're living in is that we have to have the confidence of knowing that it's not our big brother that's with us, but it's our heavenly father. God is with me. Say that with me. Say it again. Say, God is with me. Yeah, that's the difference. It makes all the difference in the world who is with us. And even though we're going through these terrible times, uh, we're unsure. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people are losing their jobs. Some people are not sure. Don't worry about that. We, 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 we're told to be careful for nothing but to pray about what? Everything. Make your requests and your petitions known to God. So we're not to worry. God is with you. He will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. And that's the assurance that we have. God says, even though you go through the waters, even though you go through the fire, you go through the rivers, God said, don't fear. Why, Lord? Because I am with you. And that's why David could say in the 23rd Psalms, fourth, fourth verse, he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? I will fear no evil. Why, David? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So even though we walk through this time, these turbulent times, these, these trying times, these hard times, we are not going to fear because God is with us as a people. Amen? Now, we, as, we, as, we, as we look at the prayer that Jesus said, as he prayed to God, as his time upon this earth was coming close to an end, he prayed to God and he said, Father, he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them. Them who, those who, who are you talking about? I'm praying for your children. I'm praying for, for your people, the ones that you've given me, Lord, the disciples. I'm praying for them, for they are thine. Say, I belong to God. And as long as I belong to God, he's mine, I'm his, he's going to take care of me. And all are mine and all are thine, verse 10, St. John 17, verse 10. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. 
And now I'm no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. He said, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept. And like I would like to close with this particular verse here. He said, everyone that you give me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. And that's where we got our subject. Not a one. Say not a one. As we go through this time, as we go through this season, as we go through this crisis, you, I want that to be our prayer as a church family. I want us to, 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 to pray this every day, not a one. Not a one of our church members, amen, will be touched with this crisis. Not a one of our family members, come on, say not a one. Not a one of our family members, our loved ones, not a one of them will be touched with this COVID-19. If it has a name, it must bow to the name of Jesus. So not a one is, is what the message that God is telling me to share with you. Speak that over your family. Speak that over your children. Speak that on your job. Speak that over your loved ones. Speak that wherever you go. Not a one. Jesus said this. He said, listen, Father. He said, all that you've given me, he said, I've kept. And I've lost not a one. And that's what we go for. As we go forth, family, we go forth with assurance and knowing that God is with us. And we can pray this prayer that Jesus prayed. All that you've given me, Lord, I've lost not a one. I pray that this has helped you. And I pray that you be encouraged. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, God is with you. And you pray this prayer every day. You let the devil know. Let him hear you say it. Let the demons hear you say it. Not a one will be lost during this crisis. Can you say amen? I remember as a child, as I grew up, we don't sing many hymns as much as we used to. But this is an old familiar hymn, and one of the verses always touched my heart so much because as a child, I went through so many things. But as I look back over my shoulder, I can say what this verse says. It says, through many dangers, toys and snares, I have already come towards grace that brought me safe, Lord, thus far. And grace will lead me home. Can you say amen? Remember, not a one. God bless.